Hurricane Hillary rapidly intensifying. Increasingly dangerous situation for the Pacific coast of Mexico, the Baja California Peninsula and possibly beyond will be getting the effects of Hurricane Hillary, a category 2 right now and likely to reach major hurricane status in fairly short order throughout the rest of today. It is currently 105 mile per hour winds and a pressure of 962 millibars moving west-northwest uh, at 16 miles per hour. Category 2 as of 12 noon uh, Pacific Daylight Time this August 17th, as you can see on that satellite imagery. Well here it is right now displayed on the map, 110 miles per hour as mentioned, 15.9 north, 108.3 degrees west and a very large wind field on that eastern side, northeast quadrant particularly, extending out 240 nautical miles. Probable storm warning in effect for the southern tip of Baja California and watches further north. It's 554 kilometers from Manzanillo, 621 from Preda Vallata, 799 from Cabo San Lucas, 945 from La Paz and 2050 from Tijuana on the US border. The storm will rapidly accelerate towards the north eventually, uh, probably not immediately but later on in about a couple of days and then shoot up the, east, the, the west coast of Mexico and then the United States. Uh, the storm will be on a weakening trend when it arrives but it will still be a powerful hurricane possibly but heavy rainfall is the primary threat. Flash flooding and dangerous landslides are likely all along the peninsula and into Southern California. Rainfall of over 10 inches is possible in some areas of higher elevation, that's 250 millimeters, but it's not always the amount of rainfall, it's sometimes the rain rate that can really cause the most flash flooding issues. So here's the uh, forecast then over the next few days, over the weekend, uh, expanding wind field there, peaking on Saturday and then gradually shrinking a little bit as the storm weakens and then shooting off through into Southern California. National Hurricane Center still think it will be tropical now by the time it reaches Southern California. Uh, what, only one or two other storms have done that, Nora springs to mind back in 1997. It dissipates early in the week as it shoots up towards Nevada. Currently 110 miles per hour as you can see here and uh, supported by several of these satellite estimates right now. National Hurricane Center are also running with that and they're expecting, well actually no they were running with 105 at their latest advisory but I expect that they will call it higher fairly soon uh, given the current rate and the eye starting to appear on satellite imagery. There's the forecast cone, uh, if you didn't believe me, a tropical storm on Monday morning in Southern California and a hurricane on Sunday and it really starts moving more quickly there. Also you can see the area that's marked in the tropical storm watch and warning there um, on a very unusual track forecast. Here's the GFS model over the next seven days, what we expect to see, at least a Category 3 peak. NHC think it will reach Category 4 and then moving on up the coast. GFS, interestingly, has it closer to the coast, indeed offshore, pretty much all the way up into uh, the LA area uh, and then moving inland afterwards. That would be a worst case scenario probably because the less land interaction would mean uh, more time that the storm has over water and uh, a slower weakening rate. You can see it there as we go on to the close uh, zoom in there over the Channel Islands and then over at Los Angeles and then towards the north. Here's the simulated reflectivity and you can see one of the leading edges of the bands there that switches from east to north uh, throughout the storm's progression and really causes very high amounts of rain rates and rainfall uh, totals across that whole peninsula region and up into Southern California. Watch again closely as you can see that band moving through the Baja California Peninsula and on the other side of the Gulf of California as well could be some interesting rain rates there too and then what's left of the storm progresses through the interior of the western United States. So rainfall total estimates here and this is the GFS model, the resolution isn't perfect so we could see locally higher amounts. 
There's a little area just on that southern tip of Baja California that could get quite a lot of rainfall. One or two mountains there as well could get up towards the 10 inch mark and a few spots obviously further north, eight inches there depicted um, and further north as well. Looking at similar amounts there, but once again, I think it could be a little bit higher than what's being depicted there because of the model resolution. I would expect up to 10 inches, 250 millimeters. Uh, Los Angeles there, probably around three to four inches. San Diego, uh, maybe around three or four as well. And inland Nevada also possibly getting to three inches. Sea surface temperatures are providing a lot of energy for the storm right now. They're around 29 degrees Celsius and they'll continue to be so. Down to 28 near Baja California Sur. And then once it reaches the central part of the peninsula, it will fall below 25 degrees. And that's obviously pretty chilly for a tropical cyclone. But uh, look at the Gulf of California though, really warm waters there. If a storm, this storm won't, but if a storm did manage to move into that Gulf, uh, it might stand a chance with extremely warm SSTs over 31 degrees. Well, here's the latest satellite imagery and it is a looker, a very uh, picturesque and fascinating storm with a uh, large extensive uh, banding away from the center of it and an emerging eye which uh, which is more is likely to get better and better defined as we go on through the rest of today into tomorrow here's one or two water vapor views that's the mid water vapor uh, we'll switch to the higher water vapor as well and you can see there is a lot of dry air for this storm to contend with to contend with uh, as it continues northwestwards and that's probably what will start weakening it uh, later on but for now it's got a good 24 hours at least uh, to really uh, push right up there on the intensity stakes uh, here's some imagery from the force 13 website you can access it through that link uh, true color imagery uh, looking very good once again and the ram imagery here as well with that eye starting to appear more clearly and i reckon this could reach category 3 very soon